The boy and the girl. Are you happy? The boy asked, looking over to his lover. I think so. Why do you ask? The girl answered. You know we cannot have children. It's impossible. That's why I'm asking. The girl wrapped herself around him. Remember you saying you wanted offspring one day? I am happy, dummy. The girl gave him a kiss. It would be nice to have offspring. But right now I just want to be here with you. The boy slid his hand down her body, over her scales, feeling her coils around his body. He did not know if she was lying, to spare him the pain that made it even more painful for him. Tears started flowing down his cheeks. I am sorry I was born a human. She uncoiled her body from him. I am sorry I was not born a human she said before putting her clothes on and slithering out the door. The boy lay there, looking at the ceiling, remembering her f when they were children. The first kiss, the first flowers he gave her. She was always smiling back then, to him at least. The others were just unkind to her. He knew it was over. They could not make each other happy, no matter what. He still loved her. A Boy and a Girl After Part 1 The boy looked at the screen in front of him. It was blank, just black. He had been looking at it for the last hour since he came to work and sat down at his desk. What he had said to the only girl he had ever loved was what he thought of right at that moment. Now it was haunting his mind. A voice behind him asked, Have you seen Ella Frank? The question was unexpected for the boy. He had been lost in his own thoughts. The man continued, She was not at the reception, and she does not answer her mobile. Looking up, Frank answered with a weak voice, I... I do not know. I have not seen her since... He trailed off and pushed the power button on the workstation. Did something happen? The man pulled over a chair to Frank's desk and sat down on it. You're out of it, and Ella's not here. Something must have happened. I... He looked at his colleague. I sort of broke up with her, Alexander. Calling me Alexander? Alexander rubbed his eyes and pulled the chair that Frank sat on around so he could look him in the eyes. Bad choice. Sorry, Alex. No, not that. Your girlfriend. Breaking up with a serpent is bad. Alex closed his eyes and looked like he was in deep thought. You know where Ella lives, right? Frank nodded. Yes. Why do you ask? While you were studying serpents in the bedroom, I was studying them in the classroom. They are not human, you know. They are jealous and have low emotional barriers. Frank opened his mouth to speak, but could not say anything. You have to go now to a place of residence. Alexander looked at Frank with a stern expression. Now! Go now! Yeah, yes, Frank said and stood up before walking towards the lift. Alex ran after him and said to him, Yeah, call for paramedics. Frank felt a chill down his neck and back. He picked up his pace. A Boy and a Girl After Part 2 The girl looked in the mirror at her form, her hands on her skin, in this oversized bathroom. She cursed her form, her bald head, her scales, her snake-like lower body. If it was not for that, she would still be with him, the man she had spent most of her life with. Kids, she sighed. Ella, why did you let him so close to you? She spoke to the her in the mirror. You are disgusting, Ella. She repeated what she was told by those around her as a youngling. 
She was still wet from stepping out of the shower. It had been longer than usual. She thought she could clean away her self-loading, but it did not work. She picked up the towel from the floor and dried herself off, before wrapping her tail where her cloaca opening was with a bandage, the bandage acting as her panties. What's the use? she said whilst eyeing the clothes hanging from the wall hanger. Humans. She opened her mouth and looked inside with the help of the mirror, looking at what was not there, at where her fangs no longer were. At that moment she wished she could cry, to feel what the humans felt, this sadness that they are talking about. All this was for him. She reluctantly put on her oversized t-shirt. It made her feel safer for some reason, perhaps from herself. She opened the door into the hallway that led between the front door and the living room and cooking area. She looked at the photo of her and Frank on the wall right in front of the bathroom door. She was smiling, had an auburn-colored wig and a sailor's outfit. She took the photo, frame and all, and threw it at the front door, shattering the glass and breaking the photo frame. It was a farce, fake, all of it. That was not her. She did not look that much as a human as that girl. The sun shot a single ray onto the pile of wood, paper and glass that the photo frame now was. I will deal with that later, she said to herself. She moved into the living room and slid onto the sofa, turning on the TV. She sat through the channels one after another, not stopping at one. It's all the same, she said and turned the TV off. It was midday now. She had not gone to work. She thought it was not worth the effort, working in the reception of a company that provided services to other companies. It had suddenly felt so artificial. Even the concept of money did. She was not human. That she knew now more than ever. She had emulated them over the years, living amongst them, being one of them. Frank, she... She thought of him now. She felt ill, thinking that she would be without him. Why? Why did she feel like this for a human? She made her way into the kitchen, picking one of the knives in the knife block. Too short. She picked the next. That was better. The knife, an Asian cook's knife, felt heavy in her hand. She hoped it would do the job. She went back into the bathroom. She did not feel afraid, only calm. She would now be able to become something that Frank would look at, not being something that he thought was so disgusting. She lifted her shirt, eyeing where her homomimicry top third met her snake lower two thirds. Only a few cuts were needed, she thought. The egg of the knife felt cold against her skin. Only a cut. The knocking on the door brought her back to reality and the sudden fear of what she was about to do flooded her mind. Now banging. Ella! It's Frank! The voice made Ella scared. Open up! Please! The knife had not moved from where she held it a moment ago. She jerked involuntarily. The blade felt cooler than before. Something cold was flowing down her lower body, onto the floor. The knife dropped. She felt dizzy. Something broke in the hallway. Help. A boy and a girl. After. Part. Three. Frank came pounding on the door to the only girl he had ever loved. The one he had broken up with the night before. There was no answer from the other side of the door. He felt the door handle. The door was open. Frank pushed himself into the apartment, stepping on something that broke. It was a picture frame that had been destroyed. In it was a picture of him and Ella. The broken glass of the picture frame had pierced the paper of the photograph going through her neck. Panic broke out in Frank's head. Something felt wrong. He ran into the living room area. Ella! He had not heard the meek help from the bathroom he had run past. Ella! 
he ran into the windowless sleeping chamber. She was not there. Where are you, Ella? He was frantic now, pulling open the bathroom door. There was blood on the floor, and blood on a beautiful homomimicryic serpent on it. The room was bright and cool. Ella felt sluggish. Her hand was warm and a bit damp. She looked at her hand, noticing that another hand was holding it. It was a human hand. Are you awake, Ella? Frank's voice rang out over the landscape of her still distant mind, bringing her back to reality. Frank, she said without emotion, what happened? You tried to commit suicide, it seems. His voice was trembling. I am sorry, I should never have left you. Ella looked at Frank with an inquisitional look. I tried to commit suicide. Her head ached. I tried to become human. I tried to kill myself. It is all my fault. I should never have told you those things. I love you. I will never leave you. She looked into Frank's eyes, noticing the fluid that ran down his face. Tears, she thought to herself, trying to remember what it meant. Sadness. You do not have to worry about it. It was just a... I don't remember why I tried to hurt myself any more. I know. The boy stood up from the chair, leaning over the girl. Their lips met. The blue book in Frank's hands was heavy. It was written by Professor Fargo Windfall and Dr. Sophia Jordson. He was halfway through it by now. Human and homo mimicryic serpent relations in the modern world. Alexander knew the book well. It was not strictly scientific in nature, but it was used in the cognitive development of sentient species course he had taken at college. Yeah, I thought I needed to... Brush up on is probably the wrong thing to say, but brush up on my serpent knowledge. Frank smiled, looking up at his friend. Alexander sighed, refraining from saying something along the lines of telling Frank that he should have done it a long time ago. Frank picked up the mobile phone that he had placed on the table and looked at the time. Well, lunch is over. Time to take off a few items on the bug tracker. He put the phone in his pocket and shoved the book into his backpack before hanging the backpack over his shoulder and walking towards his cubicle. See you later then, Alexander said. Oh, yeah, the wedding is in five weeks, Frank said over his shoulder. What wedding? Alexander was dumbstruck. Hey, Frank, what do you mean wedding? Frank just waved over his shoulder and disappeared down a corridor. You've been listening to Gustav Hartwigson's A Boy and a Girl or The Boy and the Girl, uh, depending on the full story. Um, so I just wanted to stick in here a little saying hi to you people. This has been a pain in the ass to, pain in the ass, pain in the arse to record. Um, because, well, it's fucking hard for dyslexic to read all this fucking shit. Um, and you have to re-record everything when you screw up and when you have too long be between the words that it is impossible to understand what is actually happening. You know, right, about like that, you know. Um, yeah. I just wanted to say, if there's anything strange, words that ain't, uh, ain't pronounced correctly, it's because, well, I fucking, it was pretty fucking pain in the fucking ass to record this. Um, basically, this 15 minutes of recording has taken about 3 hours? Holy fucking shit. That is fucking insane, Gigo. Anyway, goodbye.